An awake fibro-optic intubation secures the airway without general anesthesia. We will demonstrate this technique in a way that is well tolerated by patients and in accordance with the guidelines drawn up by the Difficult Airway Society. We will demonstrate the nasal approach in a volunteer with normal airway anatomy, but the oral approach is equally valid, depending on circumstances. We use a modern video bronchoscope, which is a great tool that allows for situational awareness amongst all team members and good teaching conditions. Your team should consist of trained staff with individual roles assigned, communicated and confirmed. There should be a second operator well trained in airway management, usually an anaesthetist or an ENT surgeon, and at least one assistant. Here's a suggestion for equipment and team member placement. Start with a checklist. Discuss potential problems and contingency plans. Confirm that all equipment is operational, including a video laryngoscope, and that all emergency drugs are at hand. A laryngeal mask airway device should be readily available as it can serve both as a backup airway management and as a conduit through which it can be much easier to reach the larynx. In high-risk cases, mark the location for the scalpel cricothyroidotomy, just in case. DAS suggests the mnemonic STOP during awake tracheal intubation, which stands for sedate, topicalize, oxygenate and perform. Prepare high-concentration local anaesthetics, usually lidocaine, for injecting through the working channel of the bronchoscope. 1 ml fluid and 9 ml of air. Draw up suitable induction agents. Confirm that the suction works. For nasotracheal intubation, extra long ET tubes or special nasotracheal tubes are recommended. An oral intubation also requires a bite block to prevent accidental damage to the scope or tube. Oxygenation should commence as soon as it's practically possible and continue throughout the procedure. A high-flow nasal cannula is an effective method of maintaining oxygenation. Sedation is optional if you're very experienced with the drugs. It improves patient comfort and we believe it increases safety by suppressing cough and allowing for a calmer procedure, though some will argue that the risk of airway tonus loss is too great. A remifentanil infusion is a good option due to its short-acting profile, titratability and cough suppression, but if in doubt, request help or avoid sedation altogether. Next, topicalize the airway, the importance of which cannot be stressed enough. Consider glycopyrrolate, which reduces salivation and thereby makes the applied local anaesthetic more effective, but note that it has to be administered at least 20 minutes before the procedure. A lidocaine gel coated nasopharyngeal airway is a good way of starting to anaesthetize the nasal cavity. Next, start spraying using a local anaesthetic containing a vasoconstrictor. First nasally and then orally. DAS recommends 20 to 30 sprays over a 5 minute period. This may feel excessive, but it is the key to effective topicalization. It's usually not a problem, but do consider the maximum doses of local anaesthetics, especially if there's other imminent use, for example by wound infiltration by the surgeons. Test the anesthesia of the nasal cavity by carefully inserting a suction catheter. Now perform the intubation. Stand in front of the patient with your arms at a comfortable level. Use an elevated platform if necessary to avoid working above your shoulder height. Lubricate the bronchoscope and fixate the ET tube. You may need to remove the proximal connector, but make sure not to lose it. Introduce the bronchoscope into the nasal cavity and carefully make your way into the oropharynx, looking down at the base of the tongue. Keep communicating with the patient as you proceed. If the patient experiences discomfort, retract the scope Spray more local anaesthetic and be sure to await the onset. 
proceed to identify the epiglottis and place the bronchoscope just above the vocal cords and spray them with local anaesthetic. The air in the syringe will aerosolize it. Repeat if necessary. Remind the patient that they may experience coughing as you're entering the trachea. Make sure that you see the tracheal rings and proceed until you see the carina. Now hold the bronchoscope firmly as the assistant advances the tube, railroading it into the trachea. A rotation may be required as you advance. This is a good time to remind the patient that they will not be able to speak beyond this point. Once the tube is in the trachea, confirm the position by grabbing hold of the bronchoscope just over the end and retracting it from the carina until you see the tip of the tube. It should be about 3 to 4 centimeters. Firmly hold the tube in place as you remove the bronchoscope and reattach the connector. Connect to the ventilator and confirm end tidal CO2 waves on the monitor. Visual confirmation of the tube in the trachea combined with end tidal CO2 is a two-point check for correct placement. Now inflate the cuff and sedate the patient further if required. Congratulations! You have now performed an awake fiber optic intubation. We would like to extend our thanks to the staff and our volunteer at the University Hospital in Lund.